In this video, I'm going to show you the types of Sends and Reaper. So the project in front of me here with a vocal, some drums, a bass, and some keys. Let's hear what it sounds like now. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. The music is fading, but this is our favorite part. So I want to add some effects to the vocal. And typically, if we're using a cue or compression, we would add it right to the track. But for something like reverb or delay, I tend to put them on a separate track known as an effects return. So let's create a new track. Let's start off with delay. Let's go to the effects on this track. We'll type in to the filter delay and we'll use rear delay. Double click it and it looks like this. Now because the dry sound is coming from the track, we can turn off the dry from the delay. Right here, leave the wet fully up. Let's keep the length at four eighth notes or half note. Let's bring up some feedback for some repeats and let's filter out the low end with the high pass filter. And that should be good for our delay. So now to hear delay on our vocal, we'll create a send from the vocal track to the effects return track. So we'll go to the routing on the effects track and just drag it and drop it down here. Notice the cursor changes to a patch cable, letting us know we're creating a send. And our send looks like this. And notice our send also appears on the track because I set up in the options menu, show sends in track control panel when size permits. So if this track is big enough, we can see and adjust our send right here in the track control panel. Or we can adjust it right in here. Now we can see by default, it's sending at full level or zero dB. And it's a post fader send. So let's see what it sounds like now. Where the last people stand, as you can tell, it's too loud. So let's bring it down. Where the last people Where stand, the last people still dancing when the lights come on. That sounds better. And we can also adjust our send before we create it to a default level. So if you don't like to start with your sends fully up, let's delete this send and let's go to our preferences. Control comma on the PC or command comma on the Mac and go under project track send defaults. And right over here, we can adjust the default send level when we create new sends. Again, by default, it starts with full level or zero dB, but we can change it to all the way down by typing in minus infinity. And now, if we create another send the same way, it starts off all the way down. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. The music is fading. And we can set this to any level we prefer. I personally prefer about minus 18 dB, which is a pretty good starting point for most of the effects I use. So now if I create a send, it's gonna to default to minus 18 dB. Then I can adjust it to taste. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. Let's try the same thing with reverb. Let's create a new track, name it Reverb. Let's add a reverb to this track. We'll type in the filter verb and let's choose Reverbate, which looks like this. And again, we don't need the dry sound. Let's put up the wet sound full by double clicking it. We'll adjust the room size to be big and bright. And let's hear what that sounds like if we create a send from our vocal to the reverb, like this. Drop it. Now we have a send right here, but we could also adjust it in here. Reverb and delay. Where the last people standing, 
still dancing when the lights come on The music is fading But this is our favorite part So now we have reverb and delay on the vocal. Now if we look right here at this button, this decides if our sends are mono or stereo. They default to stereo, which is typically fine, but there is one issue with it. Let's solo the vocal and let's pan it to the left. And let's notice what happens. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. Not only is the vocal panned to the left, but the delay and reverb are also in the left only. And if we move it to the right, it'd be the same thing on the other side. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. That's because our sends are stereo, so we're only sending to one side at a time. And there's a bigger issue if we pan our reverb to the left, and the delay, but keep our vocal on the right. Now let's check out what happens. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. Our vocal is dry, because we're sending to the right, but our effects are on the left, so they're not getting any signal. At least it's not returning our effects. So in this situation, it makes more sense to use mono sense. So let's put our reverb and a delay back in the middle. Let's go to our send on our reverb and let's change it to a mono send. So the color changes, letting us know we're sending in mono. Let's do the same thing with the delay, change it to mono. And now with our vocal panned to the right, we're still gonna hear our effects in the middle. Or with reverb, we're gonna hear them in stereo. So we'll still get a wide sound on that reverb, even with the vocal just on one side. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. So in those situations with reverb and delay, it might make more sense to change this to mono instead of stereo. But because the vocal is in the middle, we could leave them as stereo. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. Now, if we go to our sends, we'll also notice by default that our sends are post fader and post pan, meaning the send is happening after our fader. So let's hear what that sounds like. Let's open the mixer. Let's adjust the level of the vocal and notice the level of the effects. Where the last people stand is. Notice the effect level is tied to the vocal level. Let's hear it in solo. Where the last people stand in, still dancing when the lights come on. The music is fading, but this is our favorite. So the louder the vocal, the louder the effects, which is the purpose of using a post fader send as it happens after the fader. But there are times where you want to use a pre fader send. Like if you're creating a bus that you want to be completely separate from the original track, you could send pre fader. But the best example is if you're creating a headphone mix. So let's send our vocal to a separate headphone mix. Let's make a new track. Name it headphones. Let's go to the routing on this track. Let's turn off the master parent send. So we're not going to hear it in our speakers, but then we can send it to a different harbor output, which for me is output three and four, where my headphones are plugged into and my computer audio interface. So if I choose this, the headphone track is only going to my headphones. So now, if I send my vocal to this track, by creating a send, we probably want to change this from a post fader send to pre fader post effects or pre fader pre effects, depending if I want to send the track effects with it. So if I choose this, the level of our send is completely independent 
of the level of our track. So we can send it to this track right here. Where the last people stand is still dancing when the lights come on. Now if we turn down the volume of the vocal. Where the last people stand. We can see it's still sending to the headphone track, which we could hear by changing the routing and turning on the master parent set. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the light. So a headphone mix is still getting a vocal, even though we turn down the fader on the vocal track. But notice if we mute this track. Even though our send is pre-fader, it's not sending to this track because this track is muted. And if you want to change that, and in this situation, we probably do, go to the preferences and go over here to mute solo and turn on pre-fader sends survive the track being muted and pre-fader hardware outputs also survive the track being muted. These are off by default, but for this situation, we should turn them on. So now, with this send being pre-fader, even if this track is muted, it's still gonna send to a headphone mix. Which you could hear by turning on the master parent send on this track. Where the last people standing, still dancing when the lights come on. So even though this track is muted, the pre-fader send is still sending to a headphone track. So if you're creating pre-fader sends, it's a good idea to change that preference in order to create completely separate headphone mixes. And we could also change our sends by default to be pre-fader if we're gonna use those a bunch. So let's delete the headphone send, go to our preferences, go back to the track send defaults, and we can change it right here to be pre-fader post effects. So now when we create that same send, by default, it's set up to be pre-fader. So it's sending a separate independent mix to a headphone track and therefore to our headphones. Where the last people stand is still dancing when the lights come on. The music is fading. But this is our favorite part. I used to feel like an outcast. I think I'm alright. As we can see, our headphones are still getting the vocal, even though the vocal track is muted. Because we turned on that preference right over here. And again, these are off by default. So that's pretty much it. That's the types of sends in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo boys, let's go.